So, Paul, why are you looking for that stuff? <clears throat> or play Candy Crush. I don't know. What, I never know what you're doing. Got to catch them all, buddy. <laughs> Got to catch them all. Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. I would like to play a game. Because I'm usually known for that. One offense or two offense and two defense. Okay. Okay. What what are we doing with two offense? Two, two defense? offense, two defense. Okay. I want you to name one guy who's a breakout on offense and one guy's gonna be a huge disappointment. Oh. And then on defense right. we do the same thing. Okay. Okay. So do you want the offense what do you want first of all? Do you want the breakout or the or the Disappointment on offense, because I'll take the other. I'll take. I'll take breakout on defense. Breakout. <laughs> and the episode's over. I already know what you're gonna say. <laughs> All right. So you want the breakout on defense, so I have to take the disappointment on defense. Yeah. Okay. So then we'll split for yeah, offense. That and works. I take the breakout on offense. Correct. And you play. You take the disappointment. All right, you guys got that? <laughs> Who's on first? Oh, we got a rock, paper, scissors to talk about who goes first. Okay, okay ready? This is why we can't do this. <laughs> Didn't we rock, paper, scissors before and the same thing happened? We usually do because you never thought I would, you, I would just succumb to the avalanche. That's right. No, no it's like rock, that. rock, rock. <laughs> That's it. Or you could go with a paper cut. <laughs> <laughs> or Edward Scissorhands. Uh, we'll go breakout on defense. Breakout on defense. What do you got? Are you ready for this? No. I don't know if you're ready for this. Your breakout candidate on the defense is Jerry Hughes. What? Right. So here, here's here's my logic, right? Jerry has been a, has been a firm member of that rotation for quite some time, right? Mm -hmm. Jerry does not play 75% of snaps. But last year, he was behind in snaps to Mario Addison by a fraction of a percentage. When you look at who else was in that defensive end rotation, there wasn't there wasn't a lot, right? I think you take Jerry down to 40% snap count, and you see a 2017 Jerry Hughes, right? A real wrecker at 40%. You're going to take him out of run situations, right? You're going to put him in true pass rush situations. I think you're going to see a very aggressive Jerry Hughes with less snaps because the truth is right he's getting older i think you can pick and choose a bit more because you're going to want jerry to take on a lot of snaps at the beginning of the season while you're working in and breaking in basham and rousseau but once you hit week seven week eight we know how this goes with mcdermott the rookies win their snaps by week six week seven week eight and now you're starting to see jerry maybe 30 percent of the game 35 percent of the game you go ahead and give me Jerry Hughes at 35% snap count, and you're going to see an animal. He's going to be a total oh. animal at 35%. Mm. Total animal. You disagree. I like your logic. Oh, okay. That was a good. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That was satisfying. It was a satisfying. That was satisfying. Now, I am I am torn between my biggest disappointment on the defense because I'm torn between these two guys, and I don't know which one I should pick. Between okay. Trey White and Micah Hyde. Okay. Being my biggest disappointment for 2021. Now the re now the reason that we're probably not gonna get out of here. <laughs> oh. Look at this. I'm turning around. Now the reason why I picked who I picked is no fault of their own. Okay. And here's why. I think the adjustments that you make on the front with with the front uh seven. Mm-hmm. And the things that you've done with the front seven are going to ultimately alter the production value of both White and Hyde. Hoyer's still going to lurk around the box and make all those tackles and be a maniac. Okay. Wallace is going to get picked on, but he always gets picked on. Everyone knows that. All right. White 
is going to be they're going to avoid him at all costs uh -huh. and they're going to avoid Hyde at all costs and okay. Due to the improvements and the things that you did in the front seven and the kind of mixture of the scheme that you're going to do, mm -hmm. maybe playing Jerry Hughes 35%, you know, okay. or 25%, they're not going to have opportunity to do the things that they have to do. Right, okay. So I think by no fault of their own, you're going to look at, by like week eight, you're going to look at and then say, what? why does Trey White have two picks? Because nobody throws at him. Why does he have like seven passes defensed? Because nobody picks on him. They don't get okay. a chance to because of Rousseau and all those guys, the front wall, Oliver, getting to the quarterback. And the front seven is going to benefit greatly from what's going on. Okay. And I think that numbers-wise, Hyde and White are going to suffer because of that. People are going to be like, what do they do? Like, okay. Oh, you're seeing this guy's a top safety? He has like, in, in week five, he has like 20 tackles. So, because like, nobody gets to him. Okay. That's an interesting take. That's the I because I think this defense is primed and ready to punch a lot of people in the mouth. Well, and they did what they needed to do by adding speed. They did. They, they did add some speed. Now the cornerback position, just to, just across that defensive that defensive line, mm -hmm. they're they're pretty swift. Yes, they're pretty swift at this point. Yeah, I, mean, I like it, but that's why I say, I guess disappointment is probably not the word. You hear people people say lack of production. It's not like production. They're going to actively avoid hiding the white this year. Which okay. is all right, so offensively, now yes. I have to get the breakout. Do you want to do disappointment before breakout? Yes, we got to end it on a positive note. All right. <laughs> My <laughs> biggest offensive disappointment is, and I don't necessarily believe this, but I'm going to throw it out there, Jake Kumaro. And here's why. Jake Kumaro right now is everything Bills fans want to talk about. Oh, God. He's having he's, a breakout camp. He's the, mm. He's having a great camp, breakout camp. There's, this happens it's, every year. Exactly. Remember Cam Phillips is having a great breakout camp? Do you remember when, uh, uh, like, Who was the Justin guy? Hardy had a breakout camp the one year? Duke Williams is having the camp of a lifetime. Like, I just... I'm not believing any of that because every season we talk about a wide receiver who's having a breakout season. I, I temper your expectations, Bills fans. Like Jake Humaro is a he very well could make the roster, right? But that's because he's played a hundred snaps on special teams each of his three seasons in the NFL. Like, if you're gonna keep him, it's because he's playing special teams for you. It's not necessarily because he's gonna contribute on offense. And if he can contribute on offense, that's a bonus. That's a bonus. Is that touchdown Jesus? It's touchdown Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, so I, I just game. don't – it's just I'm not willing to buy into the hype at this point. Why is because, it a receiver? Uh, because it's flashy and it's fun. There's rarely any seven. pass rush. Right, yeah, exactly. You know, like it's one, there's no help, right? There's there's no pressure. There's no there's nothing in the middle. There's It's one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. It's just one-on-ones. So your receivers at the beginning of the season are going to win those battles a lot of the time. So I, I'm just not buying the Jake Kumaro thing. Maybe I'll be wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. I would love to be wrong. But the fact is I'm just not – I'm not buying that one. Is this because Carolina's philosophy is a zone concept and they always try to play man against these wide receivers? And yes. Can't? Yes. <laughs> so that's why they always have breakouts? That's why they always look great. <laughs> that's amazing. Newsflash. My breakout star on the offensive side of the ball for 2021. Oh, yeah. Zach Moss. Oh, see, you tried to goat me into this one last week when you said Zach Moss during uh, Word Association mm -hmm. uh, on a Sunday drive, start? and you thought I was going to say starter. I thought you were gonna say starter. Oh, I, okay. I saw. I put it up on a T for. I thought you were gonna say starter. If you said Matt Breida, I would have said starter. Oh, my God, I <laughs> so you're coming back to me, going back to the well. Yes, and now we're. I'm firmly in the well. Now this is not just because you and I have to have differing opinions. Well, we dissent on, on this one quite differently. We yeah, do. We, we, we have do dissenting opinions on okay. this. Matt Breida, I understand. Know his skill set. Know what he brings to the table. Understand what he brings to the table. I think that Zach Moss is going to show a lot of people in the 
time that he's in there and when he plays, how valuable and how sneaky of a pick he was for this Buffalo Bills team. McDermott always likes to talk – or Bean's big on value, all right? We talked about maybe Devin Singletary getting traded in yeah, this last draft. Season. Yeah, we did. Now, I like Devin Singletary. Let me preface it by saying that. I think he's a great player. I think he's a great kid. I just – think that Zach Moss, for what you're going to be asking a running back to do in this offense, given the weapons that you have, given what you just paid your quarterback and everything surrounding it, a guy that says, okay, listen, I'm comfortable with getting 15 touches a game, maybe 10 on the ground, five targets. I can do that for you if you need me to do that because you're going to be throwing 40 times. Um, I know teams usually typically run like 80 plays a game, but you know, that being said, there's other things that go on. I have Zach Moss being the breakout 2021 candidate for the Buffalo Bills. You see, that's a that's a sneaky breakout candidate because the running backs have been so uninvolved and so by committee um, since I really since Dable, right? Mm-hmm. It's been a committee approach for the last for the last several seasons. So having a running back as your breakout candidate is is sneaky because from a production standpoint, it might not look all that different, mm-hmm. but from a snap share perspective, do you expect? Okay, let me ask this question. Do you expect Moss to out-snap Devin Singletary by a significant percentage, or do you feel like it's going to be close, but the production is going to be different? I think that if the Buffalo Bills run 60 offensive plays, mm-hmm. I think it, you, could, you could conceivably see a 40-30 or – no, I'm sorry, 80 offensive plays. You could see a 40-30-10 split between Moss, Singletary, and Breeden. Okay. Initially. Okay. And then Rita will take snaps from Singletary, not Moss. I'm, I'm, I kind of believe, I, I'm kind of with you there. But, you know, maybe the one thing, Mar, that we're kind of overlooking with the whole running back scenario thing is that we talk about Buffalo doubling down, right? They doubled down on offensive tackles in they this did. year's draft. They doubled down on defensive ends in this year's draft. They consistently doubled down at defensive tackle, right? So they, they had Harry, and then they drafted Ed the next year, right? Tight end, wide receiver. Yes. Yeah. So they do, they run these in batches, right? Mm-hmm. Are we are we over analyzing the running back thing by saying they don't love Devin Singletary because they drafted Zach Moss right behind him? They they do this. No, 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 no. I just I for I, I can see things that make their game similar. I can see things that make them very different, and I can tell that in the offensive scheme that they want to run overall, Zach Moss is a better fit than Devin Singletary. Singletary still fits. Moss still fits a little bit better. Both of them would fit better in a West Coast, 100%. I, I very much. You put them two in a West Coast offense, they're the top two. You're not even talking about Chubb and Hunt. Ooh, if that's you, If you that's put Singletary big. and Moss, I'm not kidding. You see the money Chubb just got? Oh. Like, that's big. No, but my point is this. If you put Moss and Singletary in a West Coast offense, they will be the top running back team. I'm confident saying that because that's what their skill sets lie more than EP. Does anybody remember six minutes ago when he said, uh, you know, sometimes we get burned for not being for not being big enough fans? And that was a different episode this week, yeah, not being big was. enough super fans. Woo! I'm not saying – you've agreed with me that in a different offensive Woo! system, Moss and Singletary would flourish. Top tandem in the NFL? In a oh, West Coast? Oh, in a West man. Coast. Oh, Okay. Saying thunder and lightning, my friend. <laughs> Point being is this, and here's where I'm. Here's where I started this discussion about him being a breakout candidate. Now, obviously, there's going to be a different vibe if you have Sanders in a four wide set versus Knox. Right. You're going to have to delegate something to him. Mm-hmm. Now, what is the difference if you have Sanders out there versus Knox? Okay. You put Knox out there. You could conceivably put a running a linebacker on Knox and cover him, right? Sure. Yeah. If Sanders out there, are you going to put a linebacker on him? No. Nope. You're going to delegate what? You probably have to run a little bit more nickel, aren't you? Right. You're going to so you're taking a linebacker off, point. putting a cornerback on. That leaves one. That means you're guaranteed to have a linebacker on Moss out of the backfield. Okay. That guarantees it. But if you have if you have Knox out there and they're running nickel and you flare out Moss, a corner could be going out there right. to cover him. Yeah, so corner or safety. A corner or right. safety, all right? I'm thinking that if you run those 10 personnels with the four wide sets and you put Moss in there, you're guaranteed to have a linebacker on him, in my opinion. And he will 
he'll dust any linebacker that comes his way. With the exception of Bobby Wagner. I mean, oh, <laughs> let me preface this. Let me preface this, he says. But then you look at it and that's it, interesting. It, okay. I just think that he Okay. But then again, as much as I like Moss, Brita out there in the on a linebacker. Line set, on a linebacker. See ya. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> so overall, you feel good about this offensive situation for twenty twenty one. I that's do. what I'm getting. I'm feeling okay. like, like I'm down with that. Tw- 28, 29 points a game. Oh, boy. Hold on. You're going to have to against Atlanta. They're going to put up 50. Well, they play Miami twice, so. 